get anywhere. Okay, so tonight is our database uh, tour. So when you do start, you want to start at our website, uh, which is www.midlibrary.org. So I have started here on our home page. I'm just gonna turn up my volume here in case it's hard to hear me. My little fans decided to go off. So up at the top, you have a few tabs. And the one that we're gonna pay attention to is the resources tab. And in here, the first one that you choose is going to be online databases. And this is where you will find anything that we subscribe to for your use. Um, some of these items that we have in this list, you do need your library card to put in the number to access uh, when you are at home. And there are some on here that do not because they're just direct links to websites that are uh, free for anyone to use. So not all of these on this list will need your library card, but uh, most of them and all of the ones that I put on your handout, I believe, um, would need it as well. So we're just gonna start from the top and make our way down in. Um, so our first one um, is Ancestry Library. So this is um, for genealogy information. So it has census data, passenger lists, um, and a lot of, um, sometimes you can find obituaries in there too, um, photos and other things. Uh, so right now, this is something that you have a temporary at-home access. So it's not usually available at home. Usually it's only when you're in the library, but since we are currently closed to the public for the building, uh, everything has been um, kind of flip-flopped a little right now and uh, there's temporary at home access. So as we've continued throughout the pandemic, this is something that Ancestry has continued to renew for us. Um, so if there is a stop in that we would post it on this page and let you know um, but for right now and for the foreseeable future that we know that is accessible um, and when you want to use it you would click ancestry library and most of our databases that we have has this in between uh, section here the screen that pulls up that says you need to put in your library card number um, so then I'm just gonna put in mine here and log in. And then you have access. Um, I do have a separate class on Ancestry. Uh, we're actually gonna be doing that in December. Um, I can't, I think it's my second class in December. I think the first one is for Creative Bug. Um, so you can look in our event calendar if you're interested in a whole class uh, about doing anything for Ancestry here, but I can just show you quick, um, you know, they have some quick buttons here for census, vitals, military or immigration information. And then if you wanna do a search, you would hit the begin searching button and type in your information and go from there. So that's Ancestry. Um, this is the library edition, so it is a little different uh, than the edition you would have if you were paying for Ancestry. Um, the library edition has a few less things. Um, you're not able to do things like the family tree um, and save that in there since this is a one for libraries where everybody uses. So I am going to go back to our page. The next one that we have, which is a really popular one, is A to Z databases. Um, so this is a database for business and residential listings in the United States. Um, so you can download the records into an Excel format or other kinds of formats. Um, a lot of businesses use this. Um, there's a lot of uh, self-employed people who, who use this in our library. So you click on it and again, put in your library card number. Just gonna make sure we don't have anyone waiting in the room. Okay. So 
So for HC databases, you can, uh, there's, you know, three different sections here. There's a finding businesses. Um, there is a little job section. This is not, um, it's not something that I've ever used before and I haven't heard of many people using it, but they do have a section for helping you to find jobs. Uh, then there's also the residential section. And then further down um, is stuff um, like if you're looking for sales leads, uh, if you're wanting mailing lists, uh, you can get a lot of that here and they can all split it up sometimes between um, what kind of field you're looking for too. So like they have here healthcare professionals. So I'm gonna go ahead and search, let's see, I'll just search myself. We'll see um, how much it can have correct. Let's say Wisconsin. Just give a small amount of information and see what it gives me. No records found. So what if I do just residential? Well, that must mean I have a lot of things hidden. <laughs> Let me try. I wonder if my name would have anything. It could be sometimes, depending on what you put in, might give you different things. Um, so it looks like under my maiden name, there are some stuff that got in here. Um, when I used no state, it has my first address in Madison and my second address. So it's a way that you can look up information that way. Um, if people's phone numbers are uh, cell phone numbers or they're on a no call list, um, it's gonna be pretty hard to find the phone number, but often you can still find any um, address information and it can come in handy when you're trying to find people that you lost touch with. Um, I've had plenty of reference questions with that um, and that is definitely one of the main ways that at the reference desk, we do try to help you out as we first go here. Um, I'm curious if I do no state of my no. That's funny. For some reason, my married name doesn't give anything, but my no one does. So, and then I can show you also the business side, correct? So let's see here, maybe I'll do Mattel. Since Mattel is in Middleton, American Girl. So it did pop up right away. I'm assuming that I have part of the full actual name correct. Um, but other things did pull up here. So um, Menard, that manpower group. So these are all Wisconsin ones. And so when you click in these, It gives you a lot of information. It can give you the demographic profile of that employer, um, addresses, phone numbers, websites, uh, any business credit ratings, their industry profile. Uh, so there's a lot of information that you can get this way. Um, so if you are also uh, just looking for uh, a business because you're looking to buy a product from them and you want to find out a little bit more about them, this is a way that you can get a little bit. All right. And again, if you have any questions about any of the stuff that we're looking at, 
feel free to unmute yourself um, and speak up or you can put it in the chat, especially since we have um, a small group here tonight. Okay, so next is auto report repair source. Um, so this also uh, used to be auto repair reference center or automate. So we have um, changed to auto repair source. So here uh, it's going through Badger link and it just wants you to update this. So sometimes the connection gets a little lost. So that's why it asks you. So I'm going to find Middleton Public Library. Then your library card number. Okay. So here, this is where you're going to get um, repair information for your car. So I'm going to choose, let's see here. Is it? Can't remember if my credit is 2017 or 2018, but we'll look up mine. I have a Honda Civic. Uh, EX maybe, I can't remember. So when you choose all of those different items for your car, um, they do have on the side here, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for information on airbags, air conditioning, battery replacement? So we could do like brakes. So some of this is information that you might find in um, your manuals that come with your cars and sometimes not, um, especially if you're trying to do other things. Um, like if you go to the parts and labor section, um, you know, you could say, oh, I'm looking for an alternator. And then it's going to give you, okay, so for these different years, this is the part number and here's an approximate pricing. Um, so they're pulling this from current uh, pricing and information that's out there because this is a database that's current, always up to date and current. Um, so, you know, you could call up a parts place and put in, say, I want this part number, what's your price, um, and see if it goes against what this is telling you. And also with labor, so you could check to see what um, what's an approximation of how much the labor would cost if you needed to get something fixed. Uh, so it's not going to be exact because obviously every business gets to decide what their labor is, but um, it can help you when you're trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen when you need to get your car fixed. Uh, I know recently we just had our car fixed um, and it was definitely not something that we anticipated since we were just in the middle of moving into a house. Uh, but so, you know, this, this was one way that we could look and see approximately what, what kind of damage was going to be done. Um, there also is um, like wiring diagrams. That's also a really cool one. Um, so you can do the system or component. So like if you want to do the lighting, you know, there's different ones to look at. And you can look at, at those too. So there's just a lot of great information for cars in here um, if you ever need it. 
So let's go back. Oh, it doesn't like me now. So we're going to this way. So we'll go back to our online database page. So the next one, so there's um, a bunch in here for doing um, research work. Uh, there's Britannica Library. So this is for children and adults. And this one, um, so you can do children. Uh, when you hit young adults, anything that's going to be there is also accessible um, information for adults too. It's, um, it's just meant to, you know, break it apart um, in the reference center. So you could explore articles, images and videos, biographies, So if you remember the um, encyclopedia books that used to be in everybody's house and also at the library, I think we still have, possibly have some in the children's section, um, but most of it's all online now. So this is where you can get at it. Um, so this is the children's section. It's really bright and fun. Um, so if you have a child in your life, this is something that you can sit and look at. Um, when you go into like the kids ones, you know, they have pictures, information. And I think sometimes there's little video clips too that might be in there. Um, and there is a search bar at the top for each section. This one just has it pop up right away. Um, I want to go in the image and video section quick. Um, so they kind of have it up, torn up by uh, categories here. So if you wanted to do like earth and geography, well, they have some videos, pictures, maps, uh, looks like they have some charts. So there's a lot of information that you can find there. Um, and I don't know about you, but I always love encyclopedias. Uh, that's probably part of the reason why I'm a librarian. But, um, you know, there's lots of fun information that you can just look up. And it's definitely a reputable, um, credible source for finding information. So that's Britannica. And then let's go back. So there are a few um, like Business Source Premier and Consumer Health Complete are just search engines that have to do um, with those, uh, the same thing goes for green file, but they, when you click on them, they are through BadgerLink. And so it's just a, a search engine. Um, so it's set to keyword right now. You can do company, industry, author, publication, or subject. Um, if you need to do advanced search, you could do it that way. Uh, they also have some company profiles, country reports, industry profiles. So if you wanted to know, and they have it alphabetical, so you could, you know, 1-800-flowers.com. Um, that's one that everybody knows. Uh, you know, they have their market line report. And I don't know. This is for 2019 or what it was. Yeah. So 
And if you wanted to download any of this information, um, there is this download PDF button up at the top and there's usually a print button. So that's one way that you can look at different business information. The Consumer Health Complete one has to do with health, uh, fact sheets. This is definitely not anything that should be put in place for any uh, advice from a doctor, uh, but it does have a lot of information. If you ever need to look up a disease or medications, uh, this is, is somewhere where you can go um, that has um, some popular uh, health and fitness um, sources like magazines here that you have access to. Um, they also have like evidence-based reports, the fact sheets and pamphlets. A lot of that stuff is going to be stuff that you probably would find at your doctor's office um, that are uploaded there. And they do have like the health encyclopedias and reference books. So a lot of those things that um, we actually don't have as much of in the library anymore because our reference section has gotten smaller to make room for other collections. Um, it is here in our online database. So that is the consumer health reports. Next down the line, you have consumer reports. So I also have a separate class. We did it a few months ago, and we'll probably do it again here um, during the winter. And um, so you have access to stuff that's published in their magazines and more. Uh, so this is, again, one of them that you do need to put in your number. And then you have access. So this is where you can compare cars, you can compare appliances. Um, they have all of their Black Friday stuff on here right now. So, you know, the best of for whatever appliance um, deals out there. Holiday gift guide. This is definitely a popular place for holiday gift guides. Uh, so definitely take a look at that as you're planning for your holiday shopping. And, and as far as I've heard, make sure you get it done early since this year most people are not doing their normal get togethers. A lot of people are staying home and mailing things everywhere. And so I think there's going to be a lot of craziness in the package world. So make sure you get your uh, shopping done early. Uh, but this is a really great place. I've used this multiple times for, you know, looking at cars, looking for. TVs, um, and anywhere from that to um, stuff for products for kids. Um, I've used it plenty of times when I'm looking to buy certain things for my child. So this is a great resource that you have access to. Use it. It's great. So let's go back. So the next one is Creative Bug. I'm just going to um, brief over that since uh, I have a class on that. That is uh, December 2nd, I believe. Let me just double check for you quick. Yes, yeah, so Creative Bug is, bug is December 2nd, um, and the genealogy class is the 16th. So. We'll be taking a look at that in two weeks, um, but it is a website that has arts and crafts uh, video classes that are taught by recognized design experts and artists. And then there's also things like patterns out there. Um, and it's really a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff that you can find both for adults and kids, um, but you do have to have, um, a Middleton library card. So if you notice, some of these do have in parentheses Middleton card holder access. Uh, so these are ones that we specifically pay for. 
um, other libraries might not that are in the South Central system. Uh, Madison libraries do have different uh, databases than we do, uh, depending on what they choose to subscribe to. So um, just make sure that you are a Middleton Public Library um, card holder. If um, we're not your home library, you can change it to your home library um, so that some of these would be accessible. Some of these are still only by um, your address and where you live. So even then, sometimes we can't get you access if you're technically in a different um, area for a different library um, but we try hard and um, but creative bug is one of those but again you click into it and put in your library card number um, but we'll do that in two weeks uh, there is a driving test website here i think this is just uh, direct access so you can go and find any manuals and practice tests for the DMV. We won't click into that one. Uh, Ebooks on EBSCOhost. So this is used to be called Net Library. Uh, so this is something that you have extra outside of using OverDrive or Libby. If you use um, our system for ebooks um, this is an extra thing and um, so this is where again you would put in your number and when you go in here you have the ebook collection you can browse by category we have children's arts biographies computer cooking so there's a lot of stuff here and it's going to be um, a format that you download and you can put on any computer on any device so it's just the, um, the mp3 so let's do and it looks like most of this is well there is a little fiction section um, but it looks like most of it is nonfiction. Um, I want to see what there's for the fiction. A lot of these could be classical or classics, uh, but might be some. Um, so it looks like, oh yeah, EPUB, there we go. So it's, you can get the PDF full text or EPUB full text. So that EPUB would be one that you use for um, an e-reading device, or you could just do the PDF full text and download that if you wanted to read it on your computer screen. Um, so two different ways. But it's just another great extra, extra thing. Um, this was out there before OverDrive and Libby, and a lot of people still don't have those kinds of devices uh, so you know we definitely keep this around it's very useful and helpful EBSCOhost on its own um, without the ebooks is just a general research database um, this is what i usually go to whenever i need to do any research um, if i'm trying to research a topic that's been in the news, um, in school, um, you know, this is where you go to get uh, lots of journal articles, which is usually thought of as the most reputable sources out there because they are been peer reviewed by other experts in that field. Um, in within EBSCOhost here, you have a lot of different many categories for databases. Um, it can search everything for you if you hit select all, um, or you can do one specifically. Um, some of them we already have a separate access on our page like Business Source Premier I already showed you. So that is in this list here. I usually use Academic Search Premier uh, the most for myself um, just because it's multidisciplinary and it has a very large um, amount. So it's just a search 
engine here, I usually use the advanced search uh, that gives me a lot more options. I usually would type in something here. I don't always select extra fields. You can feel free to if you want, um, like if you're looking for a specific title for something, if you were reading an article and um, another article was cited by name or by author, you can search by text or author here um, or title. Subject terms can sometimes get you where you want to go, but um, also just not selecting anything will just do it a general keyword search and I usually find that is best for my searching uh, but everybody's different. Um, I also think it's important that you make sure to select full text uh, and then if you are looking for something um, specifically for research purposes and I'm thinking you know when kids are doing papers both in um, you know, elementary, middle school, high school, and definitely college, um, it does need to be a peer reviewed journal. So um, making sure to click scholarly there. And if you're looking between a certain date, you can also do that. Um, you know, there's other limiters here. Um, those are the ones that I usually select is full text and peer reviewed. I usually ignore all the other ones um, since there's not too many other reasons, um, and then just hit search. So just a general search engine, um, but it's, it's really useful. I think it's important to have different resources out there to do your own research when you're taking in information. Um, so that's a great, great spot. All right, so let's skip over a few ones. So EBSCOhost Espanol, this is the exact same thing we were just in, but for um, Spanish speaking people. So if you know anybody or are one yourself, um, definitely check that one out or point people to that. Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica is a slightly uh, different ones in Britannica Library. Um, I think it has a little bit more in it. Then we also have Flipster. Flipster is our magazine um, subscription that we have for digital magazines. Uh, so this here is also one that you need to put your library card number in. Uh, you can get the Flipster app on devices, phones, and tablets, uh, and then you have access as well that way. Um, but you do have to use the specific sign-in for our library. Um, and this, for this year, I think it's, um, I have it on your handout, but it's like X mid users, the login, and then um, it's like Meg's 2020. Um, but usually, um, if you need it at that time, you just call up the library, um, but I do have it on your handout. So if you need that, that is uh, on your handout, the correct one. Can't remember at the moment what it is. Um, but you can also just have access by clicking in here. You just put in your library card number. And you can look at it on the website and you can read on the website if you don't want to do the app version. Um, you don't have to put in that uh, login and password if you're just using it through the website. Um, you only do that for the app. So the great thing about this too is that when you make your account with the app, um, so it's it's saving everything, um, your downloads, where what you've read, what you didn't read, what you downloaded, and then uh, you can also um, access the same account like I can uh, log in in the sign in section here and then I can download certain magazines and then go to my tablet and then read it on my tablet so it does sync back and forth. Uh, there's a lot of different titles uh, you can go through the categories here so if you're looking for like food for the holidays you can do Food Network. So it's starting to open up 
You can click through the magazine. So you can look at them digitally. I know that's definitely something that we are in need of. You don't get to sit in the library and browse right now, unfortunately. Um, but you can still check out the magazines. Um, so if there is ones that you do want in the, of the physical magazines, make sure that you do, um, you know, give, shoot us an email. Uh, you can do a, a librarian's choice request and say you want a specific title, um, certain um, months out of the year that you're looking for, and we can definitely get that for you. Um, you can also get other um, other issues. So when you go in, there's all issues here. That pops up, it looks like that's taking a while. And so you can do back issues, so it doesn't have to be just the, the current one as well. And they do go back quite a ways for certain issues. So that's really nice. And then you can also uh, print pages from here. Um, so that's always nice. So that's Flipster. Let's go back. Okay, just checking to make sure there's any questions. Don't see any. So Greenfile is another one of those search engines. This is going to be scholarly information. Um, on the environment. So that is very self-explanatory. Uh, Heritage Quest is a genealogy tool that we have. Um, it is made by Ancestry, but it is one that uh, includes slightly di different information and then some of the same. Um, the real difference is that this is one that you can access from home. Right now, technically, you can't access Ancestry from home, so there's really no difference in, in that aspect. Um, but usually, this is the one that you would have access to from home all the time. Um, but if I click on it, it looks very similar to Ancestry. Um, very similar setup and search aspect. We will go over that on December 16th if you want to come to a class specific for genealogy. Learning Express Library is a resource we have for practice tests and um, for adults and students. Um, so for students, um, there's like the ACT test. Um, SATs, PSATs, there's practice tests in there. Um, and then there's also a practice test for different fields, um, like when you have um, tests in your field that you need to take to get a license for um, a certain job, there are um, some tests in there. There used to be uh, some other types of stuff like computer skills, um, but that no longer is in there. Um, but they do have, so they have like the um, stuff to help you with a high school equivalency center. So I think it's for like GED. Um, they do have a section for Spanish speakers. Um, and I think that does also include uh, learning English. There is, there's a college admissions test preparation, um, skill building for schools, career preparation, um, the adult core skills, I can't remember what this. Oh, getting better with math skills, reading skills, writing, speaking, grammar, and becoming a US citizen. So if you know somebody who um, is thinking about becoming a citizen, there is some stuff in there to help them get started. Uh, list of that's 
really probably not for you so much. It's more for the librarians at the library. Uh, so it's just a, a resource that we have for our own job. Um, Literary Reference Center is a place where you can find information um, about literary authors and uh, works. There is Looks like they changed the website there. Um, so here there are um, different articles about works. So you know you can find somebody who maybe um, edited and has a an article about the Great Gatsby um, or Othello. Um, I know I had a French professor in college who often translated uh, Victor Hugo works um, from French to English and did a lot of work uh, in France for that. Um, so stuff that he might have um, published on that, I could probably find here in a literary reference center, um, but it's just a search tool for that then, and then also you can browse by you know all these different categories they have here um, but if you're looking for something specific that's there um, i know this is really helpful for high school and college students um, lynda.com we no longer have so this is just a notice here for you um, because of privacy laws um, we no longer can use lynda.com until they change their um, their rules. Uh, so that's just a, a notice for you there. Um, Mango is our online learning system for languages. Uh, so um, I do have a handout for that if you want to look, but I'll just sign in here. Um, if you're interested in a handout on that, let me know. Um, you can use Mango as a guest. You don't have to make anything for a sign-in, um, but you know you can learn French, learn Spanish. Um, they, you know, go through introductions, specialty units like wine and cheese, romance. Um, you know, things that are maybe a little bit more stereotypical to French, um, but they have lots of information for each language and it's pretty in-depth um, it you know listens if you have a you can choose to use a microphone and, and it can listen to how you're speaking um, it has you know reading and comprehension and spelling so it's really helping you learn the language one-on-one -on -one. it's you know similar to like a rosetta stone type thing Let's go back. All right, half we're done. So we also have an index um, here for the Middleton Times Tribune. So if you ever want to look at past issues, this is really helpful since especially if we're not in the library right now, um, you know, it tells you up here what is currently in the index. It goes right now up until September 17th of this year. Um, so anything after that, you know, we're currently working on getting that into the index. Um, so after a while, that will be added in a probably you know a few weeks the rest of September um, but that is where you can get access to that um, Morning Star is a resource that we have for financial information um, there's over 3,000 stocks listed on here mutual funds and EFTs or ETFs sorry this is another one where you would need to put in your number.
So you can look up if you're looking, if you like to buy stocks, you can read up um, on companies. If you're looking to get a new one, um, you can look to see at what's going on in the market. If you want to use the portfolio tools. Um, I haven't used this extensively, but there are a lot of people that do. Um, so if that's something you're interested in. It's a really great tool that you get free with us. So let's go back. And News Bank. So this is where you can get electronic editions of the Wisconsin State Journal, the Cap Times, and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. So you do need your library card number for this. Again, always helpful and a, a good resource when you can't be in the library to browse the newspaper section that we have. And so you just click on whichever one you want. So say you wanted the Milwaukee Sentinel. They have, here it's text and image. I think that must be the pictures that go along with it. But I can, here there's a recent issues if you're looking for back issues and you can click on which one. Um, so maybe I wanted November 14th. And here is all of the articles. Um, so it goes by section, so business section, features, new section, obituaries. Um, so this is going to be text format, so it just kind of looks like a PDF. Um, and you can download it with the download feature or print it, uh, or you can copy the link, but I don't know that unless the other person you're sending it to is going to have the same access, it may not work. So I would probably just email it that way. But that is the news bank. Now everybody's probably wondering how to get their newspapers that they normally would look at. We also have Newspaper Source Plus. Um, so this is another newspaper one. Uh, this one is a little bit more interesting because you need to use it as a search, um, search database instead of being able to select um, different issues in front of you. You have to know, okay, what paper are you looking for? Um, but it's got television, radio, newspapers, videos, and podcast information. Uh, newspapers.com is the historical newspapers archive that we use. Um, so you, depending on the newspaper, you can go back to the 1700s. Um, not every newspaper in the U.S. is in here, but there is quite a bit. Um, you'd be surprised. So I've used this often um, for like obituaries. If I'm looking for something that's in a different state, sometimes I can find it this way. Um, it's, it's, it's a little harder when it's out of state. When it's here in Wisconsin, we have a lot more um, accessibility, um, but you can search by keyword. Um, you can also, you know, go by date. You can also do um, like look by location. So if we sit location, we can zone in on some, they have some in other parts of the world too, um, but you could say you want to do United States and then you would click in the 
regional area of where you were looking for and then soon they'll give you a list of the the newspapers as you get down further in so maybe we want like twin cities so here we have like the saint paul globe appeal here that star tribune So there you could click in and find the one you want that way. Um, each newspaper is a little different uh, depending on how much of their collection they put on here. Um, you can specifically search this paper with this uh, search bar here. They also have just kind of recent things that people have looked at and clipped. Um, it's not always necessarily going to have a name if it's by someone who is using a library account. It's not going to have this information here, but these are people who pay to use that separately. Um, it looks like the Star Tribune has it going back to 1867 until 1922 right now. So that's another fun one. Um, there is a few left here. So Novelist K through 8 and Novelist Plus are uh, different resources that we have at the library for our patrons to help them find books. So you can put in a title and find a recommendation uh, based on similarity to the title that you put in. Um, so this one is for kids. Uh, some of that is in this Novelist Plus, so you still can find stuff for kids in that one. Um, it's just the other one is specifically all children. Um, but Novelist Plus is a really great tool because you can do age and then you can also do the genre. So, you know, you can look for fantasy. You can look at the best of for 2019 fiction. Uh, you can do literary fiction. Um, and it gives you book covers, which is really nice. I know people really love to see book covers. Um, and these are the recommended reads that um, are chosen by Novelist Plus. And people um, make accounts in Novelist Plus and then rate books. So there, the popularity there is um, based off of what people have been rating them as. Uh, so other patrons from other libraries uh, or people who subscribe to this database on their own. Um, when you click into a title, you know, it tells you what genre it is. It has a description, uh, the themes, storyline, and it does have a direct link to our LinkCat catalog, which is really nice because then you can check and see if it's in our library or if you can order it. Uh, there also is reviews listed here from some great sources like Booklist or Publishers Weekly. And then there also is read-alikes on the side. Um, so here, there's a few different titles and you can view all of them in a list if you want. Uh, when you do a list of them, you know, it'll give you a reason on why this is like the title you are searching by. Uh, so that's really helpful uh, in, you know, learning whether or not you're going to, to like it. Um, it's one of my favorite resources we have, um, just helping you find books. So take a look at that. Um, if you ever have a question, um, or having trouble finding something that you want to read next. You know, this is something that we can always help you with. 
Um, and sometimes we use this resource to figure that out for you. So you can try on your own or you can ask us in a librarian's choice request for that kind of thing. The next one is OverDrive. Uh, if you haven't already done OverDrive, um, this is how you can digitally check out books from the library. Um, so when you click on this, you get sent to our Wisconsin Digital Library Consortium. Uh, so this page syncs up with any app that you might download, whether it is OverDrive or Libby. So here's a little meet Libby thing. Libby is the newer app. Uh, that app is way easier to use than OverDrive. It's a lot cleaner. Um, I think OverDrive, the way that it was created, is more for older technology. Uh, so it's still around because some people do still have their older devices. Uh, but Libby, I think, is definitely the way to go. There are some limitations to it, uh, but um, overall, it's it's really great. But when you sign in, you would just select your library. So we are the South Central Link Cat Libraries. And then you put in your card number, and then you hit go, and then you can start browsing books. It's really simple. Um, and you can also read in browser if um, you don't have a device and you just have a computer. So that's always really nice. If you are interested um, more into that, I do have handouts that I can send you as well. Uh, there is a few more down here that are just links to some great resources. So we have a link here to the PBS Wisconsin Educational Videos for Kids. Um, so it's just a place where you can get um, stuff for students and teachers and also streaming or downloading um, videos for kids to watch. So if you're looking for Daniel Tiger or Mr. Rogers, uh, that's going to be in the PBS uh, website there. Uh, there is RBD or RB Digital Magazines. Uh, this is another magazine one like Flipster, um, but it's got a little bit more titles in it. Um, same thing as before, you click on it, put in your library card number, and you can look at the different titles. So you can read in browser or download to a device, and you can get the app for that as well. For this one, you don't need um, the password like Flipster. It's just your library card. Uh, reference Solutions it used to be Reference USA. Um, so this is another database that is like A to Z databases where you're looking for information about businesses um, or people. So phone numbers, addresses. Um, so it's it looks very similar. I can click into it quick. Um, they had to change their name because they were in a lawsuit against A to Z databases. So that was an interesting thing. Um, but again, you have US businesses. You can look up the US white pages. Uh, they do have the Canadian white pages in here, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can look for jobs and internships, healthcare information for physicians and dentists, um, consumer information, and new homeowners information. Um, so that is another similar one that we have. Serial Solutions is a way that you can look to see if we have a magazine or newspaper in electronic format for you. Um, so you just search here. So if I go like It's not exactly what I was looking for, but it's just another um, another way to search for magazines and newspapers. Um, 
There's also a link here to Sounds Abound. So this is a free website to help create music and sound effects. Um, so, you know, that's a whole nother thing. I'm not gonna go down that road, but it's just a, a, a quick link there. Um, we have teachingbooks.net, which is a great resource for children's and young adult books and authors. Um, Wisconsin Public Library. I do. South Central Library System is what you want. And then you would do Wilson. So here you can search by title or author. Um, you can, you know, if you're looking specifically for students or for educators, um, you can look at that. But, you know, we can look at books. Um, the, the really great thing about here is, you know, they have like author interviews, they have book guides, activities, and lessons. Uh, so if, you know, you're looking for a way to teach stuff. You know, they have nice lessons. Um, same thing goes for adult books on here um, that uh, probably high school students would read. Um, that gives you lessons and um, information about the book. And I think there's probably some way that you could use those books for book clubs too. Um, a lot of books that high schoolers read are books that just any adult reads. So um, that's always something you might do. The last ones here, um, so we have Tumble Books. This is kind of a newer thing. Um, I think we're in a trial period, so I'm gonna skip over that. US News Stream is another one to find uh, newspapers. There is, um, New York Times on here, Wall Street Journal, um, so some really hard hitting uh, newspapers you can find here. So you can find current issues. Just gonna finish up here quick. Uh, we also have Value Line, that is uh, another one for stocks, stock reports and rankings, and commentary by investment financial planners. Then we have Wisconsin newspapers. Um, this is going to have all of the small town newspapers as well. So just a, another search engine to look through those. Um, and then WorldCat is our last one. So WorldCat is something that you can use to get books from other libraries in the world. Um, we use WorldCat in our um, system to get books from elsewhere in the US. Um, we usually can't get stuff from overseas. Um, it's usually just in the um, United States, continental United States. Um, so if there's something that you're looking for, you can check in WorldCat and then you can also request it through us then. Um, so definitely take um, a look at WorldCat. If we don't have something in the library, we can usually get it from somewhere else and it's all included in your library card for free. So, sorry that the little quick at the end there, uh, but that is all of our online databases. And again, be on the lookout for new ones um, since we are trying to switch things up a little and get a little bit more of a streaming service thing going there. Um, but thank you so much for coming tonight and I hope that you have a great evening. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. Um, after this about anything that we looked at. Um, and I hope you have a good night.